back to our YouTube channel, we have some news for everybody. And it is very important mail that we received today. Today. So we have now received two letters, one for the each of us. Um, and Jordan is going to read hers. I Mine is identical, but she's just going to read hers really quick. Okay. Dear me. <laughs> <laughs> per your request, your membership resignation from the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints has been accepted and processed. Should you desire to become a member of the church in the future, the local bishop or branch president in your area will be happy to help you. Sincerely, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. There it is, all in its beautiful form. Glory. Two... Two sentences. Sentences. Which, that's fine. We would rather them have two sentences. Um, but we wanted to share a little bit how we ended up getting these letters, um, and so speedily, might I add. <laughs> um, I believe we emailed the Bishop and Stake President last Let Monday. Let me find the date. Jordan's going to find the date for us real quick. Um, she sent an email. The next day, we received an email back from the bishop saying that we would have our request processed quickly and confidentially. Um, and today is Wednesday of the following week. So it's been about a week and a half since we submitted our request. Um, um, just for reference, this process usually can take a while. Some um, people wait months mm -hmm. in order for this to happen. Yeah. Um, and that's with we'll talk a about why that didn't happen. But yeah, that's with a notarized letter. We re encourage people to send a notarized letter because it's more likely that they will take it seriously, oh. especially when they forward it on to headquarters. Then it's going to be uh, a lot smoother of a process. So, going backwards for how we got here. On the 19th of April of this year, 2021, we sent a email letter to mm -hmm. our bishop and our stake president. Um, and the reason that we decided to do this was essentially because we had our, our TikTok, which is primarily where we get our traffic and primarily how we got here is yeah, from, is our, is from TikTok. And so he, when we started posting on TikTok, he was still attending BYU Idaho, which is a church school. Um, and so part of that is having to comply with the honor code and <clears throat> apostasy or criticizing the church in any way, shape or form yeah. goes obviously against the yeah. honor code. Well, and more importantly, it goes against um, the ecclesiastical leaders endorsement that you have to obtain. You talk to a member of your local bishopric, you talk to a member of your stake president, and they tell the school that you are essentially worthy, like as if you were going to the temple. They don't ask the same questions, but they tell the, the university that you're allowed to go. So BYU, if you're not familiar, has an honor code office. Um, it's called the Student Honor Office. Which is partially students, part paid employees mm -hmm. who are in charge of enforcing the honor code and dealing with honor code violations and taking reports of honor code violations and basically disciplinary action for people who have had um, violations. And so probably the, the la second to last week of the semester. Uh, yeah. The second to last mm -hmm. week of the semester, um, I started getting calls from the honor code office. I don't go to BYU. I don't know why they called she never me. Has. And I never have gone to BYU. And BYU's like system for contacting him is correct and accurate. His phone yeah. number is up to date. I was um, the primary. I said that I could receive texts. They did not reach out to him for whatever reason. They reached out to me. Um, and so they texted me pretty much every day and called me pretty much every day until the semester ended. Mm -hmm. um, Trying to get in contact with me. Saying that the dean or whoever, the, the honor code the honor office, office, needed to meet with him immediately mm -hmm. um, about a matter immediately. I think I... That they didn't specify. They didn't specify, yeah. But I would get yeah. the same text every day. Um, and so 
we were two weeks away from the end of the semester, and so we figured, why not wait it out and see, just see what happens. Because that way, you know, he he knows he's not going to go to BYU anymore. He knows he's going to transfer. And so we should at least, I mean, if we can, let's try to get credit for this semester. Yeah. And not have it all be a wash. Because basically, if he would have gone through with the honor code office, and if they truly were contacting him about the TikTok, which I'm absolutely, I'm 99% sure they were, um, they could have expelled him. Um, and so his grades for that semester, everything up to that point would have been... been moot yeah. basically and then there's also the added um kind of salt in the wound of if you do get expelled um i've heard of people having a really tough time uh getting them to do things in order to transfer your or send your transcripts out they just kind of turn like into that. a pain in the butt basically yeah. about things and so it's really a pain to kind of deal with so we didn't respond um Probably after a week and a half of trying to get a hold of me, they eventually emailed him to his personal email, not his student email, and then to his student email. But this mm -hmm. is probably a, after a week and a half of trying to get in touch with me. Yeah, about, I think it was just like a week. Maybe a week, yeah. Because yeah. it was a week and a half before they... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So at least a week of them trying to reach out to me and only Nothing. reaching out to me and not reaching out to him. Yeah, and well, in... They sent it to my student email. They sent it to my personal email, which I don't check my student email. And I was like, I'm not responding to it when they send it to my personal email. Whatever. I don't care. But. So with all of that, we were like, okay, let's just see if we wait it out. So we did. We didn't respond, um, which was on purpose because, one, we wanted to see if we could get his grades for that semester. And, two, um, the honor code office at BYU is toxic. Um, the The horror stories that come out of the honor code office for honor code violations at BYU Idaho is are wretched, and so I don't like. We're the, taught it's it's teaching people just to interject real quick to basically police each other. Yeah. So reinforces for tattling. example, yeah. <laughs> If I were to be in my apartment and I were to swear, my roommate would report me to the honor code office because I'm not upholding the honor code. Uh, same goes for coming back after curfew, uh, grooming. My hair definitely is an honor code vi violation. Leggings, uh, code dress, violation. things like that. Um, so it's they rely on the students to report each other to police each other, which is not a good thing to be doing and then they can punish them for things like that and it's the same thing with members of the lgbtq community if any of that like if they get word of any of that activity happening that goes straight to the honor code office mm -hmm. and so it's toxic on like multiple fronts um and damaging to people on multiple fronts like there's an entire instagram account dedicated to just like horror stories that came out of the honor code office and so i don't like the amount of power that BYU feels like they have over students um, with the honor code office. I don't like it's it's very icky to me and it reeks of emotional and spiritual manipulation. Um, and so even if grades weren't a factor, I didn't want to deal with the honor code office, period. And it's not because I'm afraid of the honor code office. I couldn't give a flying F about anybody at the honor code office and they don't scare me. But the problem is, is I don't like them feeling like they have power over us mm -hmm. or our choices or our decisions. Yeah. Like our mind was made up when we made that TikTok, when we did that, the chance of him getting expelled was pretty high. Yeah. Almost a sure bet, especially with how widely spread some of our videos were. Have gone. And I was okay with being expelled and losing my progress for that semester. Like when she got the first text... I was outside with our son, ready to go for a walk, and she comes out and was like, well, are you sure that you're okay with getting expelled? Because it might just happen. Yeah. So. And so we we knew that going in. Yeah. And he was okay with it going in. And so we knew that there was a chance that that would happen, and we were, we were prepared for that. 
but I would, I don't think, even if it happened at the beginning of the semester, I don't think we would have handled the honor code office issue any differently. No. Because I don't have any desire to communicate with them. No. Like, I don't care what they think. I mean, they can go watch our TikTok videos and they'll get a little bit of an inkling of what we think about who they are. But we weren't interested in doing that. No. So we ignored it and nothing came of it until, well, really, it just kind of ended yeah, at that just, point. Yeah, eventually. His grades uh, the, got posted. The semester ended. My grades got posted. My tra my unofficial transcript updated. And we sent it off to the next university and I think that was the week, and, like the week before we sent the email to the bishop. So I think grades were posted on the 15th. Probably by the 17th, we had ordered the transcripts to be sent. And then on the 19th, we, um, we sent this letter out to our bishop and state president. So we decided to send, since his grades were posted um, and we got his transcripts over to the school that he's transferring to, we decided at that point we could send the letter to the bishop and our state president. And so basically I wrote, I spent way too much time on this letter, but I essentially wrote that we had been in sort of a faith transition, faith crisis about the truth claims of the church for the last few years. Um, and ultimately I wrote in here and we discovered through prayer and research that these truth claims are indeed false. The newly discovered truth of the falsehood of the gospel doctrine and standard works has left us no choice but to criticize it all. And so we, because the charge of apostasy in the church is that you're criticizing the church, its teachings, its leaders. It's um, history. It's history. Mm -hmm. And that's all we've done. And so I admitted, because at this point we knew with, pretty good confidence that the honor code knew about the TikTok, and so because of the severity of our actions mm -hmm. we knew it was a pretty good chance that that was going to get communicated to our bishop and disciplinary action was probably imminent and so i personally feel like disciplinary councils are grotesque and barbaric <laughs> and unchristlike and unnecessary and so I don't feel like anybody should have to participate in a disciplinary council. And I surely didn't want to. Mm -hmm. We weren't in a situation where we're like, yeah, disciplinary council for clout. Let's do it. Like, no, we weren't. We weren't there. Although it would have been a little cool. To say, it would have been funny. The church can't handle us. <laughs> However, the massive waste of a lot of people's time. I mean, they have to have 15 people on a little uh little court style hearing for us mm -hmm. it to talk about how terrible we are it, yeah and they i mean they don't want to be there and again and they're not going to accomplish anything with us no. we don't want to be there so. no and again i don't want to sit in a room or have a conference with people who are exercising they believe dominion dominion and over power us. over us based on their decisions and so we essentially we're like, okay, best case scenario is we get, like, we resign. They allow mm -hmm. us to resign our records without disciplinary action. Um, I thought the more likely scenario was the disciplinary council and we were going to get excommunicated, mm -hmm. which for those of you who aren't familiar with the church means you get, you basically get booted. Like, you're, you're yeah. done. They kick you out. Um, and so recently there's been this huge, like, John DeLynn has called it lately this purge of um people on social media who are talking about their experiences with the church who are getting threatened with disciplinary action mm -hmm. um and so we were like in the midst of all this right and so i didn't i was getting really really sick of how the church was handling um these people and handling people similar to us and doing things like doing the same thing that we're doing just in different ways and mm -hmm. different people, different personalities, different styles. And so I was tired of the church exerting this unrighteous dominion and power over these people. And so I decided that we were going to take our power back from the church and we didn't know how this was, was going to go. So essentially what we did was in this letter, we said we have committed in our actively committing actively. apostasy and i quoted what apostasy was as defined in the church handbook and i said we're 
we're aware of this and we know that this behavior can be subject to a disciplinary council. So we knew that that was, that was an option. Um, and we said like that we personally don't agree with disciplinary councils. And I expressed that we think they're barbaric and terrible. Um, and that we would prefer not to have to participate in one. But I said, however, here's kind of the predicament that we're in. You can let us resign and we'll go somewhat quietly, right? It's not really quiet, but we'll go somewhat quietly. Um, As in, you're not going to get exposed. We're going to keep on doing what we're yeah. doing. We, we very clearly outlined that we weren't going to stop what not we Not that doing. there's anything secret like that people don't know about disciplinary councils, but... You know, when you when get put on blast, record. yeah, you're not allowed to record or things like that. You have to like sign a paper saying you won't record. Um, but anywho, and so we basically put them in a in a predicament. We said, let us resign without disciplinary action and we'll continue what we're doing or, which they don't want that either. But the other side of the coin was that they can choose disciplinary action and we can get excommunicated and we will document the entire process with our platform. Like we will, I, we will document beginning to end recordings. Yeah. Utah is a one party consent state. Um, we were, I, we were willing to share that whole process. And in mm -hmm. the midst of all this going on right now, we have Natasha Helfer's excommunication that just happened and that's getting national news, huge media attention. And so they're already kind of in a, poop storm a tizzy of bad press right now and so we were like this is the opportune time to present them with okay we can turn this into a way bigger deal we can than help it needs you, to be yeah or you can hurt yourself yeah and we can make this so much worse than it needs to be by broadcasting this to our platform and sharing all the details with everyone and so we got an, a letter we got an email response from our bishop the next day um, within 24 hours and he said um, first of all he addressed us as Mr. and Mrs. Which is interesting. Which is not typical for, for church. It's brother and sister so there was already yeah. a distinction being made. Um, and he responded and said and in our letter like in the letter that we sent I didn't even say like I put it in their court and said these are like here are your options. So if you decide to go with the first one and we can resign, let me know and I will send you a letter like with our information saying our resignation. And so they didn't even respond and do that. He responded and said, nope, the letter you sent is good enough for resignation. I'll send it to headquarters right away. We'll get this processed quickly and confidentially. You'll get a letter in the mail. That was it. Yeah. Do you have any questions? If you do, let us know. Yep. And that was it. So. And so, and again. Going back to what we, where we started this video, this process can sometimes take months um, and arguing back and forth with different parties and that people want, like bishops wanting to come over and argue with you and um, try to get you to stay and people trying to ask you questions and all these things. And so the fact that this happened in like record time, what's the date on this letter? April 23rd. April 23rd. We got the is... response from the bishop on the 20th and our records were processed as being removed within three days. 72 hours of that email. Sheesh. Yeah. Which is a, a big privilege for us because I recognize that um, there are people who really want to move and leave the church um, who they're still tied. Some of our, our good friends are still tied because um, they don't want to work with quitmormon.org, who they're going through. Um, there's lots of pushback and things like that. So this has honestly been like a huge blessing. Blessing. <laughs> I have to get away from that term. Um, honestly, it's been just really good news for us that we didn't have to fight it. So we hope that, other, and I know other people have had similar experiences where it's just been a really understanding bishop or whatever. But I mean, 72 hours is... So they obviously a crazy quick timeline. They picked the much easier, easier route to go. Yeah. Um, and it just goes to show it's not hard. No, it's what not. they're doing. It's not hard. They all they have to do is run it up the flagpole. 
And so when it's when people have like contacted bishops and it's taking months and months and months yeah. to process and that's people, a choice. We have people that commented on our last video about that on TikTok saying that the the church was taking so long that they had to contact a lawyer. Um, and the lawyer called on behalf of this person and she had her resignation process like within the next 24 hours. And so it, it truly is. And it again, it's like this leadership roulette idea mm -hmm. of what you're going to get. Right. And in our situation, the circumstances for them were, mm -hmm. I feel like, much more dire. Um, they're they're losing members in the young adult age group in droves and they're trying to figure out what they can do to stop the bleeding, essentially. Yeah. And there is a very awesome, amazing, and growing community of post-Mormons, ex-Mormons on TikTok. And it is giving them a run for their money. Yeah. Because they can't, they can't control it. Yeah, especially on TikTok. I mean, some people are dedicating themselves like, this is an anti-ex-Mormon account. And they're out there just getting ripped to shreds. Because, I mean, we're not out seeking we don't seek out members we don't, that's we're not, not our audience members and whatever and if they're going to try to come like all the tags we use are not tags that mem active members would be involved with um so when other people are trying to use our tags or whatever i mean we'll retaliate if they're being ridiculous but honestly we're just keeping to ourselves i i mean there's obviously the algorithm and, and things like that, but there's, I mean, obviously there's parts of it that we can't control, but the, I mean, it just comes down to their, their bleeding in this area. And I think anything to drop, because if we went public with our, with our disciplinary hearing, if there was one, um, if we went public with that information being that our main platform is TikTok, all we do is continue to draw more attention, um, to TikTok, um, yeah. And that's the last thing they want is more people finding these things. And that's why the church has hella amazing PR and, mm -hmm. and marketing people who, who prevent members from looking at things like these as best they can. Um, but yeah, it's, it's weird getting the letter in the mail. It's weird. Like we, we got the email probably, it was probably that same date. Mm -hmm. We got the email um, saying our account was essentially not associate our personal email accounts were not associated with church accounts anymore yeah which is like your indication that they've processed yeah. it we couldn't log into our lds tools or whatever to see the directory yeah that delete like you can't get into like the temple ordinance side of, of family search anymore mm -hmm. so you can't see any temple work anymore um and so we knew that it was it was probably that day that they officially did things but it's just it's weird yeah. It's weird. I'm relieved. Um, it's kind of silly because they send you this letter in the mail and it's like such an official process um, to get your records removed because you just want to stop going. Yeah. But it's like it doesn't mean anything. <laughs> Like, we wanted to get our record, like, a lot of people don't care, and they'll just leave their records, yeah. and they don't care, and that's fine. We respect everybody's choices when it comes to how they want to leave the church. Yeah. Um, we encourage you, if you don't want to be a part of the church, to remove your records, yeah. because they they're try to keep you. your records following you wherever you go. So, they're expecting that the local members are going to pass them along to the proper place. Um, so, they could be following you, maybe a turn of... Bishop will ignite a spark and they'll move your records to your new place. And then you got well, we missionaries had, at your door or something We had like a that. former ward clerk join one of our live streams one time. And he said that when he was a ward clerk, they were using private investigator tools to track down members yeah. that they couldn't find. So when you allow them to have your information, they can do these kinds they of things. They can do those so kinds of things. We encourage people to leave or to... Remove your records. To remove their records. Because even and if your also, address is inaccurate, they yeah. will try to find you. Yeah, and not to mention, you get you still get counted in their yearly counts. Member count, yeah. And every year they're saying, I, I mean, last year they barely turned, uh, they were barely in the black for increase on uh, overall church membership. But, I mean, they're claiming nearly 17 million uh 
but that's all people that they have on the registers. I mean, that's not counting the people who don't go to church who haven't been in years. They just have the records. So it's yeah. so they're counting you. It's better. We want them to do the right thing and reflect the accurate numbers at, of church membership rather than lying to all the members and saying that it's growing when These the new numbers are on top of, of a years. <laughs> ton of dead numbers. Yeah. So. <laughs> It's just kind of we. So that's something to ponder if your records are yeah. still in the church and you are not. Um, again, we respect everybody's decision yeah. when it comes to what they what they want to do. Um, I person, I mean, this was sort of a. This was a freeing thing for us. I feel like it was mm-hmm. a. Cord cutting in a way. Yeah. Um. And they have. I mean. We've got years of deconstructing and relearning to to do but we are no longer a part of an organization that continues to harm um people yeah of all of many different classes so yeah and (laughs) outright lies and, and things like that so really that is the core of it it is us being able to emancipate ourselves from this organization corporation what yeah. have you that we no longer can in good conscience be a part of so being finally able to be out is nice and and the fact that the process for many people requires a lawyer requires a notary and things like that for a choice that they were encouraged to make when they were eight if they grew up in the church mm-hmm. or swindled into by missionaries who are taught to teach things that aren't true and that's not their fault it's not their fault no it's just ridiculous that you have to have some sort of legal knowledge or have some sort of mentor to be able to leave the church the church and not just stop going yeah i mean Uh, that's it's i mean it's, by design <laughs> it speaks for itself right yeah let's make it um very difficult one obstacle after another for people yeah. to leave it's kind of like that one episode of friends where chandler goes to quit the gym <laughs> and he has to take ross to with him <laughs> and ross ends up joining the gym <laughs> so yeah it's just ridiculous that <laughs> You have to, you have to go through, jump through all their hoops and play by their rules all the time. But we're extremely grateful that we are finally, it, it's kind of, I mean, bittersweet. I mean, I went on a mission. We worked hard to be sealed in the temple. And I think a lot of those memories still hold a lot of, at least for me, I hold those still very valuable. And I don't look on those experiences, like a lot of those experiences with, distaste or things like that mm-hmm. but um it is part of being able to repaint those things in a light that i can continue living on with them yeah and this is just like the i mean it's not i mean it's the final step as in it's the final tie like the official tie that we have to the church but i mean we're early yeah. in the path of deconstruction i mean it's i mean it's a lifelong process let's be honest um, of unlearning and relearning. Um, but yeah, it's official. Yeah. We're no longer on the rolls of the church. Anyway, uh, we're, we're about half hour. Sorry. <laughs> so it was a little lengthy, <laughs> but we, if anybody has questions, you can, um, you can ask us questions on it in our comments. Um, we try to keep up with those when we, when we can, if you're really looking to get a question or an answer really soon. Find us when we're live on TikTok. Um, we have a question and answer box. Uh, we also have a lot of other like tidbits of quick information just in our, our videos that we could refer you to. So And we have a really cool upcoming collaboration on YouTube that we're super excited about. So stay tuned for yes. that because that is going to be super exciting. It's gonna be it's gonna be a good time. We're really stoked to be able to be a part of it. So yes. we will be back with more details when things are closer to coming to fruition but for the time being we'll just leave you with that little teaser um 
go check us out on our TikTok, as we mentioned. We also are on uh, Instagram as a backup, and sometimes we do some um, little posting on stories and things. Yeah, so go follow us uh, on Instagram. Um, we do. We try to do, for the most part, we do weekly videos. This last week was mm-hmm. a little cray cray, so we didn't. Yeah. We weren't on top of it this week, but we do weekly videos, so make sure you subscribe. Let us mm-hmm. know what you want to see. Last week we talked about Joseph, or the last video we talked about uh, Joseph Smith uh, while we're reading No Man Knows My History by Fawn Brody. Um, I think next week we will continue with that, that series, because yeah. we've been <laughs> we've been diving in and we're about blowing through. our minds. Yeah. Anyhow. Anyhow. That is the end of this. Thank you very for much for watching, and we will see you soon. Yeah.